Hi guys and welcome to Homeway and this is the eTrow Booster 5. Let me tell you more about it. Broadway. And naturally also huge thanks to Zvin Amiasto for providing me this scooter for testing purposes. The e Booster 5 is equipped with a 300 or 350 watt nominal motor in the front and it has a 36 volt and 10.8 amp hour <laughs> battery. Now I hope I'll test the e Booster. Um, now I hope I'll test the e <laughs> Now I hope I'll test the e GT as well, which is a 48 volt scooter and it's way faster than this one. But for now, I have this one for testing. I did do a single range test with the, this scooter. It's around 22 kilometers, but I still had maybe 5% battery left at the end. And it was, uh, it was pretty cold around five degrees Celsius. And I had one steep incline as well in this test. So I think it's a really, really good result for this kind of battery. As usual, we do need to test the hill climbing abilities of each scooter, so here we go. I gotta say, it went pretty good, actually better than other scooters with 300 or 350 watt motors. Considerably better than the Tech Life L5 and the next next Drive N7 we had recently. Pretty good. Maybe it's because of the weight, maybe it's because of the power. I don't know, but pretty good hill climber. Could tackle our usual kind of testing a hill pretty easily. As far as it goes for like portable small scooters, I gotta say it's pretty loaded. It has a adjustable steering column, naturally it's also foldable, it has lights in the front, in the rear. It also has a brake light, decent mud guards, uh, fast battery charging. That's an important point because from 0 to 100% it takes actually below 3 hours to charge this thing. So way faster than for example a 9 baht ES4. And it has also solid tires. So the thing with solid tires is that they have less comfort than tube tires or tubeless tires with air inside, uh, but they can't be punctured and so, so that's a benefit of them. In terms of ride quality, especially in the rain, tube tires are better than solid tires, but that's what we got here. It comes also with suspension, front and rear, and I gotta say, it's really good. I mean, it's really, really good uh, for a portable scooter in terms of riding on regular tarmac it will eat up most of the bumps naturally not like a tech live x7 but it's still really good for such a portable device but riding on pavement brick roads oh not really nice it will um yeah it, it will make you shake up quite a bit
And also while grinding on pavement or these brick roads, it will make kind of a lot of noises. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind as well. The front lights are really visible for a pedestrian or a car, but they don't really illuminate uh, the road in front of you in the night. So I think the Xiaomi does a better job with the lighting up in the front. And this is also the rear light with the brake light. Yeah, it, it works, sort of. Taking a closer look at the handlebar, you can see that it's tiny. I mean, it's so narrow. It's probably the narrowest handlebar I have ever seen on a scooter, which is actually not a bad thing for a city scooter. It's really easy to drive with just one hand on uh, the handlebar and all in all, you can fit easier everywhere. So that's cool. It also folds. Now, I don't know why these screws stick out of here. They might bother you if you ride without any gloves. I was riding with gloves and it was just fine. Here's the thumb throttle, like you don't need to uh, push the scooter in order to start. And here is the regenerative braking. Now you can see that there is no disc brake or no drum brake in the scooter, the only thing that can rescue you in terms of a emergency situation is the rear, like th this brake. There's a huge difference when you brake with this brake as well. The Xiaomi with its disc brakes is quite a lot better in this regard. You can also see the screen here. Uh, it's pretty small, but it's quite well visible. The battery is shown in steps of 10%, so 100%, 90, 80, and so on. And if you have under 10% of battery, it will actually slow you down uh, below 20 kilometers an hour. The top speed usually is around 25 to 30 kilometers an hour and there are no modes in the scooter. There are four buttons below the screen. There's a horn which is actually really well uh, like hearable. It's a really high pitched sound and it works really well actually as well as a bell. Here you have the light switch and it always makes this sound. It's pretty loud actually. Uh, then there is the mode button. And one thing I miss here is that when you are riding the scooter, it just shows you the total mileage of the scooter and uh, sort of the trip odometer, but it doesn't show you the voltage. It shows you the voltage. And I wish it was also available when riding. It will give you a better sense of uh, the battery uh, state than just these bars here. Now on the right side is the on and off button. It will turn on and off the scooter. The scooter also has this folding mechanism. Works really well actually, but you have to keep in mind to hear the click when you fold the scooter. Otherwise, you the scooter might just fall on you whilst driving. And my girlfriend had this issue once, and I'm uh, and please just be aware of it that the scooter is like fully unfolded when driving it. Here's also the charge port with a rubber seal. There's also grip tape, and yeah, below you can actually see you can see the suspension down at the bottom, and here is the battery pack. So it all looks really well. It's Assembled, all looks really tight. I like that about the scooter. And in order to sum up the scooter, you also need to consider the price. And it's for around $1,100. And that's quite a sum for a um, device that has like relatively low parameters uh, in this price category. I mean, you can get a Gotway MCM5 immensely better uh, parameters than the e Trial Booster 5. Now the benefits of the scooter are obvious. It's really light, 11 kilograms. Um, it's pretty maintenance free because you don't even need to change the brakes. You need to change the tires from time to time, but definitely it's way safer than on a Xiaomi M365 scooter. Uh, it's really portable. 
Uh, it does not actually have a kickstand, so you always need to do this sort of thing. Yeah, It's pretty well assembled and I actually have driven on a very similar scooter, the Kugo S1 Pro, which actually seems really, like, really, really similar in terms of all of these components uh, to the E12, but just way cheaper. Ah, uh, yeah, here's also a hook. Is it worth the money? I don't know. You decide down in the comments below. I would probably get a Gotway M10 3 electric unicycle if I wanted the most portable device for the city. Anyhow, this has been Home Away. And if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.